So, so far with partial fractions, we've seen linear factors, linear repeated factors, and quadratic irreducible factors. Now let's look at the last case, quadratic, irreducible, and repeated. So here we have a situation. The denominator is factored for us already, and we see we have a factor there that can't be reduced any further. It's quadratic, but it's also being repeated. It's to the second power. So what we'll do is combine the two ideas we've already seen. We know, first of all, that because it's quadratic, it gets a linear expression on top. And because it's repeated, it needs to appear to every degree up to the degree we have here. So when we start off, with our expression, we're going to have an x squared plus 1 to the first and an x squared plus 1 squared. And if this was higher, if this was repeated four times, you'd have to just keep going all the way up to that degree. And because the factor is quadratic, it's the type of factor that determines what's on top. So it's a second degree factor. It gets a first degree expression on top. And the idea being that's the most general thing we could write and still be proper in terms of that factor. It's a second degree factor, so one degree less would be a first degree expression. With first degree factors, we go one degree less to a constant, zero degree. Okay. Once we have that, though, everything's always the same after this. Clear your fractions, solve for your coefficients. So multiply both sides by this denominator to clear out all our fractions. And when we multiply this first expression by that denominator, one of them will cancel, but we'll still have one. So we'll have our ax plus b times x squared plus 1. And then when we multiply this denominator by that one, it completely cancels. So then we just have the cx plus b. Okay, and then at this point, it's just a matter of matching coefficients. Remember, the shortcut doesn't work for quadratic irreducibles, and it's even more so now that it's repeated. So not even bothering with the shortcut, just going straight to writing this as a polynomial of x. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 1. And over here we've got a cubic term, ax cubed. Uh, ax, bx squared, so we have a squared term. We'll have ax and we also have cx, so we have a plus c on our x term. And then lastly, we'll have a constant b and a constant d. So we'll have b plus d there. Now we're ready to match up. Now, notice we don't even have a cubic over here on the left, but we have one over here. That's OK. It just means that that coefficient needs to be 0, because you can think of us having a, a 0 x cubed term there. So matching coefficients, a should be 0. B should be 1, right, A should be 0, B should be, think of that coefficient as 1, A plus C should be 3, and lastly, B plus D should be 1. And this works out pretty nice. We had two of those already. We know a is 0 and b is 1. So a being 0 tells us that c is 3. And b being 1 tells us d is 0. So we have all our coefficients. So let's return to our integral and see what we have. Um, ax plus b, no x plus 1. So 1 over x squared plus 1. And then for our second expression, cx plus d, 3x plus nothing. So 
3x over x squared plus 1 squared. And just a reminder, in general, on partial fractions, once you get here and have it broken apart, you can always check your work. Because if you add those back together, you should return back to the original expression. Uh, and there's lots of places in here to get a little sign wrong or something. So let's just double check. To get a common denominator, I'd have to multiply that first expression by x squared plus 1 on top and bottom. Well, then I'd have x squared plus 1 plus 3x, which is exactly what I have up top. So we did do that right, no mistakes. Um, now we just need to integrate. Recall that that first expression, that's the derivative of tan inverse. So we know the antiderivative there. And this one, we've got x squared plus 1. Its derivative is 2x, which is a multiple of 3x. So we've got a u sub we could do there. Um, so here, just for this second expression, uh, technically, I'm sort of breaking this into two integrals, but I want to save some writing. Um, I'm doing a u of x squared plus 1, so du is 2x dx, or 1 half du is x dx. So that's really just for that second expression. So the first expression, I know, I'm, I know how to do that. It's just tan inverse. And so then when I do the u sub here, we're going to be left with just that integral, tan inverse plus this integral here. And now this is just power rule. That's negative 1 over u. And lastly, we want to return to our original variable, and u was x squared plus 1. So we'll plug that back in. And there we have it. So um, we've looked at linear stuff, quadratic stuff. You could keep going with this algebra approach. You can break up cubic stuff, fourth degree stuff uh, that's irreducible. The only problem for us is that, yeah, we could break it up, but then the, the integral we'd be left with, we don't know how to integrate anyways. So there's really no point to us going farther in this algebra. So we'll really only be looking at linear factors or quadratic factors, possibly repeated. Um, now, one thing to warn you about on partial fractions in general, the initial problem there, that needs to be a proper fraction. Uh, if it's not, we need to reduce it. So next, we'll look at a little reminder of how that algebra works. How do you reduce an improper fraction down to a proper fraction um, so that we can do the partial fraction?